The chair will call the final speaker, uh, Dan McGuire. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the committee. <coughs> Uh, my name is Dan McGuire, I'm from Paxson, and today I'm representing the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. Uh, Mr. Zippel uh, sort of downplayed 150-year-old precedent, so I'm going to be even worse. I'm going to talk about 350-year-old precedent. Um, the historical basis for House Bill 133 is really impeccable. It, it's, it's, it can be traced back to a case that was instrumental in very fundamental rights being recognized. Rights of freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, and jury rights. Um, the case involved a fellow named William Penn, 1670, who was a Quaker. And he and a friend of his were preaching to a group of people about their religion, about Quakerism. And that was against the law. Um, there was an official church, Church of England. Quakerism was illegal. Um, and in particular, the way the law was written at the time, they couldn't assemble to, uh, to preach the, this false religion. And uh, so the guy was, William Penn was arrested, put on trial, and the judge in the case directed the jury to bring a guilty verdict. Um, cut, because it was so cut and dried, and the jury refused to do that. So the jury found Penn and Mead uh, not guilty, and the judge was so upset about that that he put the jury in jail for two days with no food or water. And then when they brought him back, they still refused to find him guilty. And so the judge uh, fined the jury uh, a large amount of money, and it was, apparently it was equivalent to about a year's wages, and put them in prison. And uh, finally, they, uh, they got themselves, the jury got themselves a trial, um, and uh, that judge, you know, sort of cooler heads prevailed, and that judge wrote a ruling uh, which established that jurors could not be put in jail because someone disagreed with their opinion, so uh, with their with their verdict. All right, jurors can only be put in jail uh, if there's some kind of you know bribery or malfeasance or bullying or that sort of stuff, um, but not because the judge just simply disagrees with the verdict. And so that case um, established a lot of things. It established the absolute right of juries to come up with their verdict, however they do so, and not to be criticized for it. And secondly, it, it established the right of uh, you know, freedom of religion and freedom of assembly and that sort of thing. Um, Penn later went on to uh, found the state of Pennsylvania and then the city of Philadelphia. And if you go to uh, Pennsylvania's constitution, it's, it's very strong on freedom of religion and so on. So, so the basis of this is very, very important, is very sort of historically important. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about some specifics that uh, seem to have been um, brought up earlier and a little confusing. Um, first of all, um, what this bill contains is exactly what Mr. Zibel read as the current set of instructions with one additional sentence. So the, the first two sentences are identical. Then the, follow, the last sentence is new. And the first two sentences, as you've talked about earlier, is about should and shall and ought and may and all that. And, and I just don't see what the, why would we want a jury to be somehow, why would we want to be vague to a jury about what their powers are and what their, what their duties are and so on? We want to be clear. Right? And, and, and to force them to somehow, I would agree that without this final sentence, it, it doesn't change what their power is, right? The, the, the word should does mean that they sometimes could go some other way. But, but why, why are we being vague? Why, you know, it's some, something like if, if juries have a certain right, they ought to know what it is. They ought to know what their, their, 
you know, there's, there's no point in somehow being vague or, or confusing or so on. So that's the point of the final sentence, is to say if the facts in this particular case, and I, I find that word very important on line 13 here, based upon the facts of this case, so if something about the facts of this case says that guilty verdict is not correct, then you, you can find the jury, the defendant not guilty, right? So, so for example, I, I go back to Representative Itzy's example of the husband who, uh, his wife was stricken with cancer, he gave her extra drugs, she died, and so on. Well, if I, if I twist those facts a little bit, maybe the jury would not be so sympathetic, right? What if the husband inherits a significant amount of money upon the death of his wife? What if the husband is shown to have some affair or something like that, right? So changing the facts changes what would be decided on in a given case. And that's, that's the key. That's what juries are there for. Because as legislators, you can't possibly know every single case, all the little details. There's, there's certainly edge cases between a guilty action and a not guilty action and so on. And the jurors are there to listen to it and to make that decision. And, and finally, to uh, what Senator uh, Gannon brought up about, well, wouldn't one jury maybe make a different decision as another jury? And, and of course, that's inherent in the system, you know? But the whole reason why we have a 12-person jury and we require that they be unanimous in cases of sending somebody to jail is that we, we've made the decision that it's much worse to send an innocent person to jail than it is to let a guilty person not go to jail, right? So, um, so we twist, we, we, we you know, um, emphasize or, or we, we um, skew things such that that, it, that a lot of things have to happen before somebody goes to jail, right? The, the legislature has to decide this is a guilty action. The governor has to agree with the legislature. The prosecutor has to decide that this person engaged in that guilty action. The judge has to agree that, that uh, this is a proper trial. And all 12 people on the jury have to agree that yes, that person was guilty, right? So there's a lot of steps involved. And it's true, you know, maybe in one particular trial, one of those people would have made a different decision and so on, but, but um, that happens. And it's just, we want juries to know what their powers are, and we want them to make the just decision. It's as simple as that. Okay, thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions? Seeing none, right, thank, thank you. you very much. We're going to go ahead and close the public hearing on House Bill 133.